Vietnamese people taste different. I'm gonna tell you guys eight things that shocked me about Vietnam. So if you guys that know me, I have lived in Thailand for three years. I was there recently. I was there for a month just to get everything together. And when my time ran out, I went to Vietnam. Now, I've never been to Vietnam before, so I went to a city called Da Nang. Beautiful city, such a beautiful experience. I enjoyed it, even though it was cold during my time there. I wish I was there during the heat, the summer, because you know I love heat. But it's a whole new country, whole new culture, and I have to tell you guys the things that shocked me in Da Nang, Vietnam. Okay, so the first one is there wasn't a lot of traffic lights. I'm like riding on my scooter through the town and I'm like, yo, wait. There is no traffic lights. And it's already crazy, okay? The road in Vietnam is so crazy. <laughs> There's no traffic lights, okay? Oh my god. Look at this guy. Oh shit, we gotta follow him. Every time I was driving on that bridge, I was like, I'm a survivor, I'm gonna make it, because it is so intense there. Like, I cannot pass 20 minutes driving on the road, and if I ever go there again, that's gonna be a challenge. Surviving the Vietnam Street for one hour. You literally have ghost riders, and a lot of them, people that are riding against the grain in the traffic, and you're just like, wait, wait, what's going on? And some people even drive really slow, and that can sometimes be a danger in itself. Number two, no shoes at the gym. Now, of course, I kept my shoes on, but there were so many people that went into the gym with no shoes. I'm just like, you're not scared that you might drop a dumbbell on your foot? Because you go up to the gym and there'll be like shoes, thongs, everything. And when I say thongs, I mean slides. I know Americans have a different, like, a different thing for thongs. They're thinking, you know, the G-string. But they had thongs, slippers, shoes. I'm just like, wow, no one is wearing shoes here. That was just like crazy to me, seeing people work out with their socks on. And it's actually a little bit more comfortable. I did try it on some of the exercises when I was like doing my leg press. Number three, things are so much low cost there, cheap, whatever word you want to use. The prices of food, let me show you this clip. Okay guys, I want you to let me know how much this meal you think will cost in USA. And this is vegan. Hand-sized meals, they're actually pretty big. Well, here in Vietnam, they're $13. $13, you know what that means? That means you can come to Vietnam, do YouTube full time, and you don't even have to cook. You can focus all your energy on your business, YouTube, whatever you want to do full time, build your empire, and live like a king here. This only costs, what, $13. It was amazing, because that food I just showed you was like a big, a good portion size, and it was vegan, it was plant-based, and you guys know, in the States, and even in Thailand, when you're eating vegan meals, they get l the, the price is pretty high. It's not like the cheapest thing. So going to Vietnam, I was really shocked to go to these restaurants, right, that were selling organic, plant-based, healthy, alternative foods, and the price of them. I was like, wow, this is so good. And that's one thing I loved about Vietnam, is just the cost of things was so low. You have more money. Like, I would even say it was cheaper than Chiang Mai, man. And a lot of people do say that Da Nang is like the next Chiang Mai, just a beach version. And that's another thing that shocked me. For a beach city, it was shocking that a lot of the things cost so low. You know, and I do hope in the future that things don't go high. I hope they keep it that way because, you know, it affects the locals when prices go high due to hotels, etc. So I really, really, really hope that Vietnam does not change their prices to much more higher. Some people even told me that the prices were a little bit higher due to the whole COVID break. Because when I arrived there, everything just started to open up again. Number four, guys compliment other guys. So I'm here getting my hair done at the barber and the guy says to me, you're so handsome. And I was like taken back a bit because he just said it openly in front of everyone and I'm just like, and no one blinked, no one took any notice of it. Of course, I am getting eyes at me because I do look very different. 
And this guy is straight. He was not the only one. My Uber driver was like, hey Martin, you're so handsome. When he saw my name on the thing. <laughs> when he saw me, he's like, you're so handsome. And I was like, you know what? A lot of people, guys are saying that I'm handsome. Like not everyone could be gay, right? And it's actually very typical for a man to express that towards you not feeling gay saying it, they're not feeling weird or awkward saying that you're handsome. And I even tried it and said it to one of the uh, Uber Eats or Grab Eat. I think it was Grab, yeah Grab. And I was like, oh my god, you're so handsome. He goes, thank you, and he drove off. He didn't ask for my number or anything like that. It's like in the West, it's like, oh my god, that's so gay. You said someone looks handsome. While in Vietnam, it's not considered that. And I really love that. I really love that they can express that and not feel any shame doing it because there really isn't anything wrong with saying that a man, another man is handsome. I don't know if it's like that anywhere else in Vietnam, but in Da Nang, I found it very cool. Number five, this one even shocked me. They speak in cinemas. If you're one of those people and you get annoyed that people are talking in the cinemas, you're not gonna like Ding Nang, okay? Because I'm there on my date and my date is having a full loud conversation with me and I feel, I'm, I'm so scared. This is my first time in the cinema and I'm like, you're gonna get us kicked out. But then I notice, hold on, everyone's talking. Literally everyone in the cinema is having a full conversation while they're watching a movie and I'm like, this is so cool, but at the same time, I'm so scared to start talking, they're gonna kick me out because I'm loud as hell, you know? But everyone in there was talking and I found that so cool that none of them are like hushing each other. Of course, in the good moments in the movie, the shocking moments, etc., in the movie, everyone's like a bit quiet, taken back, but during the movie, they're having like full conversations and I found that so funny But because I'm like, imagine someone that really hate that comes to Vietnam and goes to the cinema and experiences this, they're going to be so annoyed. Saying that, the movie is so loud, it doesn't really interrupt the movie. I just found it really interesting that everyone there is having conversations with each other while in the West, everyone is told to hush, not talk, you know, be quiet, be respectful of others, and they're just like, I don't care, you handsome, you know, they're talking and everything. Number six, this is a little bit of dating. Vietnam people sniff. So for example, it's like <sighs> They do that. I'm like, what are you doing? Like I'm dating this person is sniffing me just <laughs> I didn't understand at first. I'm like, do I smell good? I'm gonna smell really good. But no, that's just like their way of showing affection. I'm like, you would die. <laughs> you want human be why you're sniffing me, but nah, that's their way. They'd be like <sighs> I don't know why they do it, where they get that, but it's just, I don't know if it's all of Vietnam, but it's a Da Nang thing especially. I'm just like, this is very funny. Thank God I smell good, I put my deodorant on today, but seriously, it was just so random and very different from a lot of the things I've experienced while dating in Asia. Okay, the last one, and this is regarding different. Vietnamese people taste different. I don't know what it is. It's either you're going to tolerate it and you might not mind it to the point where you don't like it. This is gonna be controversial, okay? I know everyone's gonna hate me about this, but I'm just keeping it real. I was with a Vietnam person, kissing, making out, and he tastes so different, and I, I have to be honest, I didn't like it, but I tolerated it because I liked the person. I was like, you know what, let's just deal with this. They taste different and they don't taste nice. Some do, some you can tolerate. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's a certain taste that they have and I don't know what it is. I've been talking to my friend about it and she's like, you know what, I experienced that too. And we tried to look on the internet and we could not find anything of why Vietnam, Vietnamese or even Asian people in general actually, to be honest with you, have this taste. I don't know if it's the food they eat, the herbs they eat. I really don't know and I hope you guys can answer it in the comment section below. But for me, I like this person so much that I tolerated it. I, I didn't care. I was like, oh, here's some gum. And we, you know, we went up on our day kissing and stuff like that. But there were times that I had no gum and I was like, oh my God, what is that? Like, what is that taste? And I wish someone can explain it to me and be like, hey man, this is what it is. 
they don't brush their teeth. I don't know what it is. The person I was with, he, they had clean teeth. So I have no idea where that taste was coming from, okay? It was not nice at all. Anyway guys, if you've been to Vietnam or Da Nang especially, let me know in the comment section below anything that shocked you in your experience there. Make sure to hit the subscribe button with notification. I'll see you in my next traveling video.